Hey guys, coming at you today with a delicious, soft and moist keto pumpkin cream cheese muffin with a strudel topping. Absolutely delicious. So let's get started. Welcome back. If you're new here, thanks for joining me. My name's Alicia and I'm a sous chef with a sweet tooth. And here we make delicious pastries, many from my time as a pastry chef. And my goal is to make the best keto desserts possible. So if you enjoy these recipes, please consider hitting the subscribe button, hitting the thumbs up and leaving me a comment. It all helps my channel grow and to bring you new keto desserts every Saturday. Today, some delicious, moist pumpkin muffins. They are so good. And I actually developed this as a pumpkin bread recipe, which is probably one of my favorite things. Besides the hot fudge cake from Bob Evans, their pumpkin bread during fall season, oh, I would devour it. And it was so good. And I wanted to recreate that. So this can literally be put into a loaf pan and baked. I'm gonna have the directions in my recipe below if you just wanna make a loaf of pumpkin bread. It is so good. But I just did a zucchini bread, so I wanted to make some muffins. And of course, I had to add some extras to it. So we got some cream cheese filling in there and some crumble topping on top. And if you make 18 muffins, they're only 1.4 grams of net carbs. Super low carb, soft and delicious. So let's get started on this recipe. It's very similar to my zucchini bread recipe because I actually developed this one first, but because it was harvest season and I saw those zucchinis, I wanted to make zucchini bread. So it's pretty much the exact same. Five whole eggs, three quarters of a cup of golden monk fruit sweetener. You can use any sweetener you like though. Just keep in mind if you're using a stevia or a Splenda, sucralose, anything like that, those are way sweeter. The reason I use the monk fruit, which is blended with erythritol, is because it's a one for one with sugar. Now, of course, our pellets are a little bit different, so a lot of times I cut the sugar back a little bit, but it's not super sweet like a stevia or a Splenda. But most of them are cut with erythritol, so just to make them one to one with sugar. So I'm gonna beat this just like my other recipe. My eggs are at room temperature. I'm gonna beat this. And while you do that, you can get all your ingredients ready to go, but I already did that. So I'm gonna make the cream cheese filling and the crumble that goes on top. And I'm gonna move the mixer further away from the microphone. So hopefully that's not too loud for you guys. But I have cinnamon, pumpkin spice, my unflavored whey protein, coconut flour, xanthan gum, and baking powder in here. I'm just gonna give that all a whisk. I already sifted it, so that's ready to go. And then all the other ingredients, pumpkin puree, make sure it's pure pumpkin puree, nothing else added, a tablespoon of vanilla, and a stick of butter that I'm gonna melt in the microwave. Before I forget, I'm gonna turn the oven to 350. Okay, our butter is all melted pretty much. The residual heat will melt the rest of the butter. Now for the cream cheese filling, you need six, tables, oh, six tablespoons of powdered monk fruit. I actually weighed that out to 45 grams because when it's really clumpy, it's hard to measure. Now you can use a hand mixer for this, but I'm just gonna use some muscle. I don't like dirtying a bunch of stuff any more than I have to anyways. <laughs> I'm gonna take two egg yolks. Ooh, which my egg is already cracked. So I have a little container I'm gonna put the white in because I'm still testing French macaroons and I need all the egg whites I can get. My cream cheese has been out for a couple of hours, so it's pretty soft. I think I just did this with a spatula at first, as I'm realizing. <laughs> put that there for now. I don't find the ones I want. This is the one I want, it's over here. A nice stiff spatula. All the cream cheese out of there. We're gonna use the whisk later to make sure all the little bumps are out. Now you're going with the whisk. The last ingredient in this is just a little bit of vanilla extract. Of course I forgot it. <laughs> so I didn't forget to put it in for once. One teaspoon. You go, and you're pretty much smooth. Oh, set. Oh, shoot it everywhere. 
and set that aside. Now that that's done, I'm going to crank up this mixer a little bit more so we can get this done faster. Okay, once they have gotten super fluffy like that, you don't want any graininess. You're going to stream in a stick of melted butter. Then you're going to add in one cup of pumpkin puree. Get in there. Whoop. Doesn't want to go. Mix it up. Give it a scrape. Get all your pumpkin in there. And then your one tablespoon of vanilla. And then all your dry ingredients. Say lift it up and add them. Otherwise you might have a mess. Unlike the zucchini, there's nothing to get stuck in your whisk here. So you can just do it all in here. You are going to have to give a couple scrape downs though. I always take it off and give it a mix by hand just to make sure it's all incorporated. Get this guy out of here. Pretty easy. You just got to be a little bit patient with the eggs beating up. The warmer they are, the faster they beat up. Five minutes if they're nice and warm from warm water. I did mine a while ago, so they were more room temperature than warm at that point. It's all nice and incorporated. We gotta get our pans. Now I tried this the first time doing 13 and it ended up being, and they were pretty big and like kind of overflowing almost. So I'm like, well, it's not enough for 24, which I did try 24 and they were delicious, but they were teeny tiny. So I think the perfect median is 18. So I have 12 in a muffin tin, and then I have a silicone mold, which this is your best bet because no matter what, they kind of stick to paper. You can grease just the pan, and it takes some work to get it out, and sometimes the bottom still sticks. So I suggest the paper. Spraying the paper even helps a little bit, but if you have those silicone muffin cups that line the 12 muffin tins, that would be your best bet because that's not going to stick at all. So this is the first time I'm going to be doing 18 and I'm going to try it a different way again. This is try number three on portion scoops and stuff. So I'm going to give these a spray real quick. I'm almost out of avocado oil spray. Yep, that's it. I should have known and prepared and had one open. Let's try this again. crazy with a stick of butter and it being sprayed that it still sticks but that's the keto way apparently <laughs> okay so I have two scoops here this one is a little bit bigger than this one so I'm going to use a full one of these like three quarters of this and then another one of these and try to get the cream cheese kind of in the middle because last time I ran out of batter using a bigger one and I had to like make a divot in them and try and put the cream cheese in. I'm gonna start with filling all these with a scoop. I'm gonna do a little bit over a scoop in each, like kind of like a mounded of these. See, last time I made 24 though too. So this is gonna be the first time making 18 and the first time using these scoops. Either way, it's delicious. It's just I'm trying to make them perfect, of course, cause that's just me. You know, I'm even gonna spray the silicone just in case. <laughs> Okay, now try to level these out a little bit. So this may be a little loud. Silicone ones are easy. <laughs> okay, now scoop of this. Which last time I did like three quarters of a scoop and I had enough for all of them. So I'm gonna do a full one. Try to get it right in the center, not like that. Okay, so some of them are gonna have a little bit less. <laughs> a little bit out of each one. I experiment so you don't have to. <laughs> so that'd be, this little scooper here is about a tablespoon. So a little less than a tablespoon per. Now, top with another scoop. I 
gets really, really thick from that coconut flour. Okay, well, they're all filled and we still have some batter left. I cannot get an even number on this guy. Well, we're just gonna have to put a little bit more in each one. Gotta smush it down as you go, I guess. I was gonna tap it again, but I always like things to be even. It's the pastry school in me. We used to weigh and measure everything. If we were making 24 cakes, we figured out the amount of batter we had and we figured out how many ounces in each. I don't get that precise for you guys. I try to do portion scooping for you, so you at least have an idea how much you need in each one. I do have the portion scoops linked below if you want the same ones I have, although not the metal one. It was just a pack of the black ones. They come in handy. Okay. We're gonna call it there. It's pretty even, I think. Now we gotta make the crumble topping that goes on these guys. I meant to save my bowl that had the melted butter in it. It's gotta melt more butter. Got a major sink full of dishes. Eh. <laughs> saved my bowl. So we gotta melt one stick of butter. This is totally optional. It is delicious without this. You saw my camping video. That was my first test and they were yummy especially with a cup of coffee in the morning. I just gotta be a little extra. And this is just my strudel recipe. So, or my crisp or crumble or whatever you wanna call it. But I just added a little bit of cinnamon. So it's golden monk fruit, which I don't know if all this is gonna go through here or not. We don't want too many big clumps. Get all the clumpies out of there. I'm running out of sifters, they're all wet. <laughs> and then just 30 grams of unflavored whey protein and 30 grams of oat fiber. Oat fiber goes everywhere. Let's have like a coating of oat fiber over everything in my kitchen. <laughs> Couple lumpies in there. Those out. Okay, just whisk these together. You want that cinnamon evenly distributed. Add in your melted butter. Give it a little whiskey whisk. Until you can't anymore. <laughs> it's going with my hands a lot of times. I make a traditional crumble at work. You don't melt the butter, you cut in the butter. So I'm used to making crumbles with my hands. There we go. Looks good. Now to top each one of these, your crumble. These are gonna be so good. These are gonna be my best batch yet. Last time I made the 24, so there wasn't a lot of crumble on each one. <laughs> you excited? I'm working on a coffee cake recipe with the crumble topping. Sour cream, coffee, cake. I already made one batch and it was edible, so come in soon. Super excited for these. <laughs> All the crumble. It's zero carbs though. Okay, I'm gonna pop these into the oven. I'm gonna check them at around 14 minutes, maybe even less. I might do 12, so six turn six. Because the first ones I did that were 13 cupcakes took 14 minutes and they were a little bit dry Like they could have probably went even less. So I'm gonna try them at 12. So we'll be back when these come out of the oven Okay, hopefully these are baked all the way This is the first time doing it with batter on bottom cream cheese in the middle batter on top first time They only baked 14 minutes because I put the batter in and then squeezed the cream cheese into the batter and but it created like a pocket inside because of the air from the piping bag. So I didn't want to do that again, but they're super soft on the outside. They're a little bit gooey feeling in the middle, but I think that's just the cream cheese. So I'm going to let these cool mostly all the way, if I can wait that long. They were in for a total of 19 minutes. So, but I was also opening up the oven a lot to check because I didn't want to overbake them. So I'll probably put like, 16 to 18 minutes in the recipe if these are baked all the way. I hope they are. I never baked in silicone either. Like I got these to make Reese's cups and stuff like that. So we shall see. Be back here to try them. Okay, our pumpkin muffins are cooled. Now some of them divoted in the middle, which will happen with the cream cheese filling, but they also might not be cooked all the way. Gotta get all these out of here. Papers make it real easy. I'm gonna break into a couple of these. See how these guys come out. First time baking in these silicone molds. Whoop. Ooh. See the cream cheese? <laughs> Might be too much cream cheese filling. Maybe I'll cut that down a little bit. Super soft. They look so good. They are like so soft. 
the pumpkin bread oh my god it is so similar to the bob evans pumpkin bread soft and moist and delicious that's why they felt mushy because the cream cheese is so soft in there you do got to keep these in the refrigerator so that'll firm up a little bit but and they're also still warm so it's another reason they look so good let's first try one of these guys break this guy open That is soft and super airy and light and fluffy. This is gonna be so good. Mm-hmm. Oh man, that's good. The pumpkin bread itself isn't super sweet. So that crumble on top is like perfect little added sweetness to your muffin. It's so soft. Mm. It's gonna be hard not to eat like all these right now. Mm. Wow. That is the perfect breakfast muffin to go with your coffee. Oh man. I'm gonna try one of these with the wrapper on that's a little sunk in the middle. I wanna see if these are completely cooked or not. Let's see how the paper does. Oh, it didn't stick too bad. Cream cheese was all on one side for this guy. <laughs> Let's break him open here. Ooh. It is still good, it looks like. My God. I'm gonna take these to my mom's tonight. Not tonight, tomorrow night. She doesn't like pumpkin, but I bet she'll eat these. These are the best batch yet. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. They are by far the perfect keto pumpkin muffin. I swear, like you cannot find a better, softer, more moist keto pumpkin muffin recipe than this one. It is amazing. I even surprised myself with this. It was so good. I hope you guys try out this recipe for yourself and love it as much as I do. Don't forget to check out my Amazon links and the blog link to the full recipe in the description box below including the pumpkin bread recipe. If you enjoy this recipe, give it a big thumbs up. And as always, I'll be back with many more keto dessert recipes. Bye guys.